Hi. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, my name is Rotem Sigal Bole. I'm a clinical and research dietitian from Israel. And today I would like to give you some updates regarding the use of the Crohn's disease exclusion diet in uh, patients with the Crohn's disease. So let's start. Those are my disclosures. In 2021, it's also nutrition remains the first line therapy for induction of remission in children with uh, luminal Crohn's disease, according to the uh, updated ESPAGAN and ECHO guidelines um, that were published just uh, recently. However, there are several groups who uh, published some guidance for physicians with strategies for the management of recently diagnosed Crohn's disease. And this is a study done by a uh, a Columbell and is a group. And what we can see here um, in the review, um, they, um, they, they show that in pediatric small bowel disease, the options, the treatment options are exclusive mental nutrition, but also the Crohn's disease exclusion diet is a, a dietary you know, intervention that should be considered in uh, those patients. So we can see that there, there are, we have more and more data to support the use of the CDD as well. And those are several studies that were published uh, up to uh, 2019. Um, and we can see the high remission rate using the Crohn's disease exclusion diet in those uh, patients, especially in the pediatric fields and in young adults. However, I, on 2020 and 2021, we can see more and more studies using the Crohn's disease exclusion diet done by our groups, but also it was very exciting to see that there were several uh, other groups uh, around the world who used the CDD and, um, and report on their success um, with using the study. And you can see also that there are more studies using uh, the CDD in adults. And we'll do a, I will give you an overview on the study that we published just um, in recently. What we already know, we already know that the Crohn's disease is effective, Crohn's disease exclusion diet is effective for induction of remission in children with the uh, Crohn's disease. Um, this is a pivotal study that was published in 2019 in gastroenterology, where we compared exclusive enteral nutrition to, uh, with partial enteral, uh, exclusive enteral nutrition to the Crohn's disease exclusion diet with partial enteral nutrition. And we demonstrated that the um, parents were superior in those who received the Crohn's disease exclusion diet compared to those who received the EEN, with comparable effect in terms of uh, response and remission rate. But now when, um, when we are asking the question if this treatment might be um, a, a good option for adults, we, can, we should think about um, uh, what is the strategy that we want to use. Usually, um, children look up to learn from the adults. And even in the, uh, um, in the um, uh, medical wards, um, the pediatrician learns from and look up for the adults to learn about new, new treatments, new medications, and so on. And here we have opportunity to learn from uh, and to adapt treatment that is mainly used in children and to see if we can use it and also adapt it for adults as well. So I would like to, um, uh, to uh, show you and present you here our experience with the Crohn disease exclusion diet in adults from Israel. And this is a study that was published just recently um, um, a month ago in Lancet Gastroenterology. This study was led by uh, Dr. Anit Yanai from uh, Israel. And um, what we did here, we used a, an open label pilot randomized control trials comparing 44 adults patients with mild to moderate Crohn's disease. And what, the, what we did in this study, um, patients were randomized to receive either um, the Crohn's disease exclusion diet together with partial enteral nutrition using a modular, modular in this case for uh, 24 weeks uh, or to receive uh, the Crohn's disease exclusion diet without uh, a formula but with calcium supplements. Um, all patients were followed for uh, 24 weeks. And after 24 weeks, we did the colonoscopy and to assess for mucosal healing. At each um, visit, we assessed uh, HBI for uh, remission um, and inflammatory markers such as CRP and uh, uh, calipotectin and also microbiome were assessed. 
And we use the multidisciplinary team with physician, nurse, and uh, dietitians uh, to support the patients. And we also assess compa compliance using the uh, modified mask questionnaire, phone calls, and, and food diaries. And the dietitians supported the patients in any way they could uh, um, around uh, the 24 weeks of the uh, study period. So what we can see in the results, we can see in the upper um, panel that. Um, which in, in, include all cohorts, we can see that 70% of patients responded to dietary uh, treatment using uh, the CDD or the CDD with partial internal nutrition. After six weeks, 62% of the patients obtained uh, clinical remission. And after 24 weeks, we can see that 50% of the patients were in a clinical remission using those two treatment options. And when we assess colonoscopy in those patients, we can see that 35% uh, of them obtained a uh, mucosal healing. Um, when we can see on the, down, on the lower panel, we can see the, uh, the differences between both groups. And we can see that even though there was no significant difference between um, groups in uh, each of the parameters, here we can see that uh, the group received the CDD together with the partial internal admission and a slight um, more improvement than the, the other group. Again, it did not reach a significant, but we can see the trend that um, uh, it was a uh, uh, better to uh, with the partial internal nutrition. So we can see um, even in endoscopic um, uh, remission, there was no difference, significant difference, but again, there was like uh, an improvement for this group. What about the um, uh, inflammatory markers? We can see here a significant improvement in uh, every Brecho index uh, using both uh, growth treatment in total cohort. Um, we can see up to uh, 24 weeks. And also we can see that there was no significant difference between groups in terms of uh, uh, every Brecho index. And uh, there was improvement in both uh, groups. CRP levels, we can see again the significant improvement over time. And also with carprotectin levels, we can see the uh, significant improvement over time with a uh, significant result between um, baseline to um, week tw uh, 12. What about the colonoscopies? So we had um, 22 patients who had the paired colonoscopies and paired scores between the baseline to week 24. And we can see that um, most of the patients had a significant improvement in their uh, endoscopic um, uh, remission, um, which is also emphasized the use of uh, uh, dietary treatment and also to, uh, to lead to causal eating. And, what about compliance? And many times we are asking about the compliance if patients can maintain uh, the dietary restrictions over time. And uh, here we can see that um, in by intention to treat, um, we can see that uh, it still had a high remission rate over time in both group and even when we are looking on as treated analysis, which is better in terms of compliance to understand if patients are adhered to the dietary therapy if they are doing it or not. So we can see that there was a significant um, uh, compliance rate between um, those uh, patients as well. Additional study that was just published recently uh, done by a group from Poland, from Warsaw, and they reported their um, and their experience with the Crohn's disease exclusion diet in a prospective study in adults patients. And they uh, assessed 32 patients who used uh, with mild to moderate, uh, mild to severe uh, Crohn disease. And the, um, the CDAI was between 151 to 562. And all those patients received the Crohn's disease exclusion diet with partial internal nutrition using remodulin. And the intervention they gave them is for, uh, they gave them intervention for 12 weeks. And what they reported, we can see that after six weeks of uh, using the CDD with partial internal nutrition, 76% um, of patients obtained um, clinical remission. And after 12 weeks, 82% of them um, uh, obtained the clinical remission. In terms of response, we can see in the lower panel, um, we can see that um, also high response rate in patients with more than 80% after week uh, six or after week um, 12. 
What about the inflammatory markers? We can also uh, see here a significant improvement in CDAI after uh, uh, six and 12 weeks with also the improvement in protein levels and also uh, CRP. And um, we can see with all the results that show that um, it the significant improvement and reduction in those parameters. What about quality of life? So we always assume uh, that um, when patients had uh, dietary restrictions and they need to change their, uh, their diet and their quality of life will, uh, um, will decrease. However, they reported all the, all the 32 patients completed uh, the questionnaires uh, of, uh, on quality of life, DiabetesQ questionnaire, and they demonstrated and reported that um, patients had a significant improvement after six and 12 weeks uh, using uh, the CDD with partial nutrition. Additional option that were discussed recently is maybe we can use a short course of EEN for two weeks, and then it will be followed by the CDAD. So it might be considered in most severe disease um, or in patients that you need to hospitalize them and to give them uh, two weeks uh, in, in, in the hospital of using EEN, and then when they're going back home, they can use the CDAD. And sometimes patients and families need some time to organize all the foods and uh, organize uh, the education time and uh, think to understand the CDD. And therefore, it's also a treatment option to use for two weeks and then uh, continue with the CDD. We reported uh, experience previously in one of our uh, papers um, that three out of the five patients who use this um, strategy uh, obtained remission. And uh, we have an ongoing um, uh, study, um, random prospective open label randomized control trial in mild to severe uh, pediatric Crohn's disease, um, which we already, it's an international study, and we already uh, recruited uh, 52 uh, patients out of the seven, 76 patients who should be uh, in order to complete uh, the study. And um, so it's interesting to see the results. But uh, meanwhile, um, we have a real-world data from the group from um, uh, Kuecia, um, where they did a retrospective analysis on 61 patients. Most of the patients received uh, EEN for six to eight weeks, and uh, 20 patients received the CDD with partial internal nutrition. Um, in this group, most of the, the patients received one to two weeks of EEN prior to the CDD um, uh, program for, se uh, for seven, uh, which completed the seven to eight weeks. So we can see that uh, they reported that 70% of patients obtained remission after using this strategy. And also the four patients who did the CDD with partial and general nutrition alone um, without, um, without the EEN prior to this treatment, also 75% of the patients uh, report remission. So we can see that it's, it can be considered as another treatment option as well. An additional case-based approach study was published uh, a year ago, and there they mentioned several new potential strategies to incorporate the dietary therapy. So um, even though in studies we usually take the mild to moderate disease, and usually it's new onset disease, and there are several some criteria with or without medications that we need to define in the study. In practice, we can see sometimes different uh, cases. And we have patients who are following the CDD as a monotherapy and for the first 12 weeks. And sometimes um, several of them also continue to the maintenance phase as a monotherapy. There are patients who will combine drugs with the Crohn's disease exclusion diet. Um, um, uh, and also there are some cases when we, when we will recommend some uh, de-escalation when the patients can uh, reduce the, the medication and stay on, um, their, um, on, on the diet and following some kind of dietary restrictions. Um, again, usually it's something that is coming up from the patients and not something that and the physicians are uh, recommending uh, to do, but sometimes when patients are willing to stop their medications and um, uh, they can follow the diet. And um, sometimes there are cases when patients are on dietary therapy and then um, um, there are some on biological therapy, for instance, and there are some 
kind of cases of uh, secondary loss of response, and then we can use the CDD as a strategy to risk as a risk uh, uh, rescue therapy, and in also to um, continue with the medical um, uh, therapy. And so, um, as a reminder, we had uh, we have published in 2017 in JCC a case series and um, about 21 patients who lost response to an anti TNF. And we gave them the CDD with partial nutrition in most of the cases, and we reported a remission in 62% of the patients, with also that 77% of them uh, of the responder continued successfully with the dietary and um, with the biological therapy. So we used it as a rescue uh, therapy as well. What about the microbiome? And uh, this is an abstract that was uh, um, presented in the uh, ECO. And um, what we reported that the dietary therapy corrected dysbiosis toward uh, healthy controls uh, after uh, using six weeks of uh, interventions. And those who, um, who were on, it's from the gastroenterology paper uh, cohort, and those who received the CDD for 12 weeks for the longer, per, uh, longer term, then it uh, led to prevention of the rebound that we saw in those who went back to a uh, free diet. Additional point that I would like to emphasize that it's one of the um, uh, questions that I received uh, a lot about uh, the diet. So is it the mandatory food diet or an exclusion diet? And basically, since the diet called the corn disease exclusion diet, the main mechanism of the diet is the exclusion of dietary components that are potentially pro-inflammatory. So the most important thing in the diet is to avoid the uh, dietary components that might be pro-inflammatory. Uh, at later stage, um, we wanted from nutritional point of view to make sure that patients had a sufficient amount of protein and also to try to improve the microbiome. But it's very important to understand that the mandatory foods, or uh, I'm trying to call them more recommended food rather than mandatory, because they are not mandatory food for success with the diet. Um, we just wanted to, um, uh, to help patients and um, in terms of the nutritional aspect of uh, the diet. So in order to success with the uh, success with dietary therapy, we need to support our patients. And we have several ways to support them. We have a recipe booklet with for different phases. You can provide them with a list of specific products that are without additive that are suitable for the CDD and also where they can find them. And we can provide them with examples of weekly meal plans, shopping lists, meal preparation day advice, and also they can use the mobile app of the, the Modulife program and it has a lot of recipes over there that they can find. And of course, um, and we can see that there are a lot of many good dishes that they can prepare using uh, and following the CDD. So it's important also to share with them that they can eat um, um, the very tasty foods um, uh, also and not uh, only uh, um, something that uh, is not uh, fun or uh, lovely. And of course, a very important role of the dietitian in the group and in order to, um, to treat patients with the uh, a Crohn disease, the dietitian has a pivotal role in order to conduct, the, the dietitian's role is to conduct a complete nutritional assessment to explain the patients, the, um, the basis behind the treatment and why they're doing um, and following the restrictions. Um, to encourage them and to provide some motivation in order to make sure that the patient is compliant with the dietary restrictions and to show them that there is a hope and they will feel much better after a short time. And also to ask some questions and guidance um, um, to discuss some diff difficulties and the dietitian can provide some solution uh, for those cases. So in conclusion, we saw that the Crohn disease exclusion diet together with partial enteral nutrition might be considered also as a treatment option for adult patients with mild to moderate disease. Um, a short course of uh, exclusive enteral nutrition followed by the CDAD might be considered in more severe cases. And also the dietitians play an important and pivotal role in the management of the, uh, the dietary treatment. And with that, I would like to thank you for listening and you can, of course, can 
um, uh, visit the website to learn more about uh, the CDD. And if you have questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much.